Helldiver number 12707 really hated getting shot. That's why, wherever he went, he brought his trusty ballistic shield. Boss just can't touch him. Helldiver number 12708 really hated getting shot. That's why, wherever he went, he brought his trusty ballistic shield. Boss just can't touch him. Reginald here. This video is going to be a deep dive on the Ballistic Shield in Helldivers 2. As it turns out, there's quite a lot of depth to this particular piece of equipment, and since I'm going to be starting a series on Know Your Equipment for the game, I thought it would be fun to do something that's not a weapon to start. Testing things in Helldivers 2 is a bit hard, so I got some friends to help. And I'd like to thank all of them for their help. There's a lot to talk about in regards to the shield, as it turns out. So first, we're going to start with what the shield can do and what the shield can't do. To the best of my knowledge, the way Helldiver's armor types work are there's a light, medium, and heavy armor and some in-betweenies, and then there's vehicle armor, which is its own distinct class. The shield, from what I can tell from testing, appears to be heavy armor. So it'll block any shots that can't penetrate heavy armor. Uh, and that goes for your friend's weapons as well, which is kind of how we figured that out. However, the weapon does not protect you from any kind of anti-vehicle threats, and it certainly doesn't protect you from explosions. Are you ready? Yep. Toast. Any threats that do get blocked by the shield are usually, if they're ballistic, ricocheted. And the ricochets can hit friendlies, though they don't appear to do any damage. To use the shield, that is to say to block, you're going to hold right click on a computer or whatever button makes you aim down sights for all of your guns. On this weapon, so that'll be the defender and all of the pistols, but none of the other rifles or shotguns. You can continue to block while using the grenade, the stim, and while reloading. Each of these has its own level of exposure that's different from just holding the shield up naturally, so please be advised that throwing a grenade or using a stim will expose you to a lot of fire even though the shield is still being held up and blocking some of the incoming attacks. It may appear hear that there are differences between the shield being held up in front of you while reloading with a first person view as opposed to a third person view. However, I tested this thoroughly and it does not change the actual visual effect on for the third person view for the enemies to shoot you so it won't impact your safety while reloading, which is fairly tight. That's the basics, but let's get into the weeds. First of all, the shield itself is a physical object. It's not like an item or something that's attached to the character loosely. It's actually a physical object with its own hitboxes. And rather than hitboxes, boxes, I think it seems to be calculated along with the mesh, and I base that on how accurate it is to shoot around the shield. The shield's hitboxes, if they have hitboxes, are very carefully defined so that they match the physical object itself, and the object maintains those hitboxes even when it is discarded. This means that an enemy can shoot any targets not actively covered by the shield. This can mean your legs while they are moving, your arm while it is firing a weapon over the shield, or even your face through the mail slot. Shot to make. Furthermore, it appears to have its own health bar. It does seem to take some amount of damage from anti-vehicle attacks without breaking, but with enough damage or with the right weapon, it does appear to actually break permanently. I don't know if this applies to other backpack items, but it might, and that might explain why sometimes I don't have them anymore after I take a couple Devastator hits. Other AoE attacks, like fire for example, also go right around the shield and kill you anyway. Something you might expect the shield to be able to help with that it doesn't is melee attacks. There doesn't appear to be any mitigating effect from using the shield against melee enemies. I think that is kind of lame, actually. It is a shield, it should be able to protect it from melee attacks, even if it's only directionally. I tested both, and they didn't work. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So in this footage, I tested the shield's melee resistance to incoming attacks from a single commissar on level 1 difficulty. I was able to count the number of attacks it took to kill me, and it was 6 in both cases. With some difficulty and some help, I was able to do the same thing on a level 9, and I got slightly more varied results. I think there are different types of attacks enemies can do, but I get the same number at least when using the shield that I got at level 1, so there doesn't appear to be any difference on the amount of damage that the enemy does 
nor the number of attacks it takes to kill me while I'm using a shield. So if anything, the shield is at most mitigating about one attack worth of damage across five attacks from a Commissar, which is not very impressive. I also did a test at level one against a warrior, I believe this was. It was not very impressive, and it was hard to get consistent results because the attacks the warrior does are different and do different amounts of damage, so this was less consistent or easy to see. I think given the Commissar data is very consistent, we can say with confidence that the shield didn't make much of a difference there, and it's not going to make much of a difference against a warrior either, from what I could tell. Something to note here is we did test all of the stratagem weapons you can use, and we even managed to place ourselves in front of a Gatling turret and see how that worked. And yeah, this thing appears to block all shots from stratagem weapons that are of the non-vehicle penetrating calibers, and it can even block Gatling shots, though good luck doing that in a real game without getting blown away. <laughs> I got beheaded. No, well, I think so. I'll have to analyze that, but it did not go well. That's the answer. It doesn't block anything that has any kind of explosion going on. It doesn't block against the autocannon. Obviously, anything bigger than the autocannon is going to blow you sky high. It also doesn't block the Scorcher, which can outright kill you through it, but it will block the Dominator and the Explosive Liberator, so be advised on those points. The reason I bring up all these comparisons to the nominal weapons of the Helldivers crew is because there's probably some level of derivation going on within the system of the game that will allow you to understand what you can and can't block with the shield against, say, bots who are also using some kind of gun. So anything that is apparently an anti-vehicle weapon like a Devastator rocket uh, is definitely going to be able to blow your shield apart. Grenades also dangerous to you when using the shield, so be advised on that point. I think I covered all the major details of the shield, but I thought I would put in some tips, tricks, and idiosyncrasies. So I mentioned that you can actually get shot in the face through this thing, so that means the shield is a mitigating tool. It doesn't prevent all damage, and that includes against your arms and legs. An idiosyncrasy of the device is when you are standing on a hill, it is sometimes the case that your legs will clip through the front of the shield. If this happens, you can absolutely be shot in the knee and killed through the base of the shield. Crouching can at times help alleviate that, but while you are strafing while crouching, you can see the legs of the user pretty well. Since the hitboxes are real, uh, you can see that you can easily, in this case, shoot someone's legs while they are crouch walking sideways and strafing. Strafing is the best plan, however, when using the shield because you want to get the projectiles to try and hit your shield and not your arm on the right. If you are getting sprayed at by a group of bots, they're much more likely to hit you in the arm if you're walking head on than if you are walking to the right. If you're walking to the left, there's no noticeable difference that I was able to ascertain. I did do some testing to try and validate this, and it appears that due to the aim point delay and lag when you are aiming at an enemy that is moving to the right with the shield, your shots will more likely hit the shield than the user's arm if you are aiming on target. I have to assume the AI is aiming directly at the players and not in advance of the player's position unless there's some sort of predictive targeting at play. And so in that case, going to the right will provide you with a higher hit probability on the shield than your person, and that's to your advantage. However, there is a small window when you're doing that where you could shoot someone in the buttocks, and in which case you will have uh, some bad luck there. So it's not a perfect thing. It is, again, hit mitigation. If you strafe to the left instead, I notice that it's much easier because all you have to do is aim to the other person's shoulder, right, or to their face, and you tend to hit the arm by accident because of the differential between the target point and the bullet time travel, since all the bullets in this game are projectiles and the enemy's bullets even move a little slower than our own from all appearances. One final note for this section is there does not appear to be, from my testing, any discernible difference between the rate of fire or accuracy of fire of using the Defender or any of the other weapons that you are able to use with the shield, which are only one-handed weapons. And the end result of that is taking the Defender and running the shield stratagem makes a lot of sense any time that you are fighting anything other than bugs. It doesn't make much sense against bugs since it has no advantage against melee damage and there's very little gunfire coming off of the bugs. And come to think of it, I think the only things that are there are sprays and explosions, so those will go right around it per my testing from the flamethrower and all of the explosives that blew me up. So I think that's about a wrap on all of the things I was able to learn about the shield and the time I've spent on it, but there were a few things I just wanted to say on the way out the door. We'll keep this pretty short, don't worry. I'd like to just have a quick discussion about what should happen to the shield. I think it's kind of fun, and I'm fine with it being damage mitigation instead of, like, perfect damage protection. That's okay. But it really needs to be able to block melee attacks. It's a darn shame that it doesn't, and I'd like to see it be fairly forgiving on that front considering what it is. I know it's a ballistic shield and not a normal melee shield. However, technically speaking, ballistic shields are usually made out of metal or some kind of composite that would serve just as well against a melee weapon, so I see no reason why it shouldn't in this context. Also, it would be better for 
gameplay, and that's the key thing. The other thing I'd like to see is it would be really nice to be able to deploy the shield, like actually place it on the ground using spikes or whatever, and then walk away from it. This would be nice because then I could use it as mobile cover and potentially deploy more than one, giving me a reason to call them down more often, aside from when they get blown up on occasion. Another thing that could be really fun is to leverage the squad utility tools that are there for squad reloads and allow users to lock their shields together to make a shield line. Is that a good idea? Probably not, but it would be really fun and I think that's the key thing. I feel so bullied. I feel intimidated. No. It's over. I think it would also be really good to be able to use non-one-handed weapons with the ballistic shield. Believe it or not, there's techniques for this in the real world, and and that includes pump shotguns. The pump shotguns we have are actually perfect for it. They have four grips on the slide, so they're perfect for ramming into your shield while attempting to pump them. I think the best way to do this would probably be to reduce the aim point recovery when firing shots and stopping, and to increase the rate of bloom growth when firing. That is to say, you should be more inaccurate if you're firing quickly, especially and that would probably be the best way to handle this because that's pretty accurate to how it would really be. It's worth mentioning that we're all running around with a bunch of bullpup guns which are all fairly short and tend to work well with the whole shield situation because they're back heavy which means they tend to sit in the shoulder well but even still you can still do this kind of thing with like a pump shotgun. You can go find videos if you want to of real ballistic shields users you doing things like this in real life. It doesn't have to be a submachine gun it can be an actual rifle. That's not to say it's the easiest thing or the best thing to do but it's doable. Which with that, I will say thank you all so much for visiting. I really enjoyed doing this. It's fun to do something a little new, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. If so, definitely let me know in the comment below. And if there's any questions you have that I didn't answer, definitely let me know those because maybe I can put them in an addendum at some point in another video. I'd be pleased to do so. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.